So let us say you have a mass m lying on the floor and a force of 20 Newton is impressed on this mass. And as a result of this force, let us say the mass moves 4 meter across and reaches this point. Now, what if I asked you what is the work done by this force? It would be quite simple to calculate. What you would say is that the work done is equal to the dot product of force and displacement. So in this case, the force is 20 newtons and the displacement is 4 meters. And you can see that the angle between these two vectors, that is the force and displacement vector, is 0 degrees because they're pointing in the same direction and therefore the cos of the angle between them would be cos 0, which would be 1. So the work done, you can say, is equal to 80 joules. Now, what if I also told you that the time taken to move this distance of 4 meters is equal to 10 seconds. So what you can also find now is what is the average work done per second. You know the total work done is 80 joules. You know the total time taken is 10 seconds. So you can say that the work done per unit time is equal to 80 joules upon 10 seconds. So I need to put T in the denominator. So this equals 8 joules per second. And in physics, what we say is this is equal to the average power developed by the force while moving the mass from this point to this point. And joules per second is very often substituted with the symbol watt. So the unit of power is watt. So we say that average power developed by a force is equal to the work done by the force upon the time taken to cause a certain displacement. So now let us try to understand what is instantaneous power. But before we do so, let us step back and recall the concept of average velocity and instantaneous velocity that we have done in earlier lessons. And what you'll recall is that average velocity is a total displacement divided by the time taken for this displacement. And you can in a way relate this with average power where what we are saying is it is the total work divided by the time taken to do that total work. But in motion, we've also had something called instantaneous velocity or velocity of a particle at an instant or at a moment of time and it is given by the formula dx upon dt where dx is the you know infinitesimally small or very small distance covered by a particle in a very short period of time dt and since the period of time is very short we say that this expression dx upon dt is the instantaneous velocity so likewise we can have something called instantaneous power and it's a power delivered by a force in a moment of time as opposed to a work done over a period of time and divide by the time taken t so let's go ahead and see what instantaneous power is so let's denote instantaneous power with pi and this would be the first derivative of work with respect to time or in simpler terms, what is that small work dw done in a small period of time dt? And since the period of time is very small, you can say it is the instantaneous power at that point of time. So work, let us say, is a function of time. And let's take an example where work is equal to 2t square plus 1. Then if you are asked, what is the instantaneous power at t equal to 1 second, we'll say that dw upon dt is equal to 40 and at t equal to 1 second, the function dw upon dt is equal to 4 watts and this is the instantaneous power. Now, there's another interesting formula which helps you calculate instantaneous power. So, let us say that there's an object traveling with a velocity v and a sudden force f is impressed on that object. So we say that the power, instantaneous power delivered by that force on that object is the dot product of force with the velocity of the object. And let's go ahead and see how this has been derived. So we've just found that p instantaneous and I'll just drop the i over here. We'll just use the notation p is equal to 
dw upon dt and we know that work is nothing but the dot product of force and displacement so this can be written as d upon dt force dot displacement and this is equal to d upon dt force into displacement mind it this cross is into into cos of the angle between the vector force and displacement so we can reconfigure this expression as force cos phi into dx upon dt and what you notice is dx upon dt is nothing but velocity of the particle so this becomes f cos phi times velocity of the particle or if you observe this nothing but f dot v so we can say that instantaneous power is equal to the dot product of force impressed on a mass into the velocity of the mass at that moment of time so to illustrate this concept a little better imagine a car which is traveling with a velocity of 10 meters per second and it is hit by a trailer with a force of 4000 newtons so let's go ahead and label the vectors over here so what we're saying is that car is moving with a velocity of 10 meters per second and the trailer comes and hits the car with a force of 4000 newtons so the force vector would be let us say something like this so this is a force of 4000 newtons which is impressed by the trailer on the car now we can say that the power delivered by the trailer or by the force of 4000 newton is given by the formula p instantaneous is equal to f dot v and here we know the force is 4000 newtons and the velocity of the object at that point of time was 10 meters per second and we also know it's given in the problem that the angle between these two vectors is 30 degrees so this this angle over here is 30 degrees so we can say we can multiply this with cos of 30 degrees and if you solve for this what you get is 34,000 400 watts or we can say that this is 34,400 joules per second of work done and this is often also written as 34.4 kilowatts.